Hey everyone, and welcome to What's Groovin'. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone. Disorderly Cone. Disorderly Cone. And unfortunately, the Needomatic this week is out for upgrades, but that's not going to stop us from looking at some neat projects. Let's get started with Metal Earth. And as we can see this week, Unfortunately, we have nothing new to look at, although we can still see we have some exciting things coming down the pipeline. There was something that was mentioned on the Reddit last week that I wanted to mention this week, which was that some people are saying that the metal is possibly a little bit thinner with some of these newer models as opposed to some of the older ones. Now, I haven't built the newer models, however, I will say that when we're comparing the color models to the original silver ones, it seems to be an unfortunate trade-off. If you want good color on your models, you kind of need to have a little bit of thinner metal. That's at least what we've seen so far. Now, in terms of the newer models, these are apparently being made in a different country than the older ones are, which is why we're seeing so many different new models come out. I haven't got my hands on these yet, so I really haven't been able to play with them to see if the metal is any any different but one would assume that if it's coming from a different manufacturer that uh, yeah guys the metal is probably going to be just a little bit different how different though well again I'm not too sure yet but some of you are let us know down in the comments below have you noticed a big difference in the metal I would love to know all right let's move on to our next guys which is going to be Peace Cool. Now, Peace Cool has released a whole bunch of brand new gem sets. Uh, these guys are pretty neat. They have a whole bunch of cool detail. We've looked at them before on the show, but let's go ahead and take a look at one more here. Looking at this right away, we can see, yeah, there is a ton of detail for us to do. I mean, just look at all that. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any tabs here. Oh yeah, there's one right there. They're actually kind of hard to see because it hides them so well. Um, they're definitely right there on the wing. You can kind of see one right there. And uh, yeah, just by those beads, it looks like they're held in place by a clasp you have to make with the metal too. I've seen some of these posted on the Reddit. These guys look really cool. If you were interested in these, I would definitely take a look at them. Here's another one. Again, we can see there's a lot of neat detail here. I don't think these are actually that complicated. They're just really pretty to look at. Again, only $9, so I can't imagine them being too complicated. And it seems the people that have built them really do enjoy them. There also seems to be some other models that have been released here, especially this one here. I might be wrong. Uh, sometimes I see things and I forget them because I see so many different models in a day. Uh, this one right here looks really cool though. I mean, wow, look at the details on this. All that red, it looks like there's some beading in there as well. The stand, this guy's got to be pretty massive. I love the little wings. It seems like wings have been coming a lot into 3D metal models lately. And I do like that. Again, $30, not too bad at all. And this is from Peace Cool. And if you guys aren't aware of Peace Cool, they make really awesome 3D metal models. If you're talking about quality, they're right next door to Metal Earth. Like, honestly, they are just side by side in terms of quality. And they have a whole lot of really interesting and neat models on the site to take a look at. Again, there's some more gem sex there. All different kinds of neat ones here. Definitely take a look at it if you get a chance. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one, which is Micro World. Now, here's some interesting stuff. This is actually from our friends over at Crazy Toys. If you haven't checked out their website yet, you definitely should. They have all kinds of neat projects on there, including these new Micro World figures. These guys look really cool. They seem to release under the whole cyber space punk outfit and just taking one look at them, yeah, you can see why. I mean, these look really hyper detailed, lots of color. They kind of are inspired by... <laughs> They actually kind of look like something out of the legend side of things, but with a lot more color and a lot more detail. The color palette here looks awesome. These pictures look great too. And we can take a look at a couple of them here. I really love the aesthetics on these guys. And again, they don't look too difficult to actually build. Uh, great color schemes. And again, uh, not too expensive either. I mean, only 12 to 13 pounds. That's about what? About $20 each for us in the United States and Canada. Maybe a little bit more with the shipping and handling again this amount of color though looks really cool and there actually seems to be a whole lot more here coming out of the micro world side of things including this really cool awesome dinosaur or I should say stegosaurus here look at this guy I mean he's absolutely awesome just an amazing amount of detail here all the different kinds of metal bedding that's going to be involved in this this is definitely a more detailed kit which is what micro world is becoming more known for I mean these guys are definitely starting to give MU a little bit of run for their money in terms 
of these bigger, more almost Gundam-like style models. This looks great. These actually kind of almost reminds me of a Zord from the uh, old Power Rangers. And uh, I, I would actually love to get my hands on one of these just to try them out. It also looks like there might be some LEDs here, but that also just might be some work to do with the uh, uh, with the marketing. I'm actually going to take that back. There's no LEDs here from what I see on just the plain look here. But again, the amount of metal that you're going to get in this kit is going to be quite big. This one here, 42 pounds. So again, it's going to be more on the expensive side here. But again, 337 pieces. It's going to be six sheets. So the bigger sheets like this is going to come in a bigger size. It's probably going to come inside of a bigger box as well. If you're interested in this, come over to Crazy Toys and take a look. Now, let's jump over to our friends over at the Moyo store. These guys have released some interesting new stuff on their site, including this really neat steampunk lighter. This is actually a kit that you're going to put together. It's in the look of an old school movie projector. And just taking one look at this, I mean, I, I love the brass aesthetic and the fact that it can be used as a lighter as well is kind of neat. I really do like the aesthetic of this. Unfortunately, there's no video actually on showing how it works, but I would love to see it working in action. Again, this operates as a lighter. So not only do you get to build a cool little model, but it also has a purpose, which I love seeing too. Going down a little bit more, we actually get to see it. They are showing off some more of these 3D printed models that have been coming out over the last two years. These 3D printed models are really neat because they showcase different gear movements like this one here at the top shows how a differential works and the second one here shows you how a car diesel engine uh sorry a stroke diesel engine works as well both leads are great for educational purposes and if you're curious about how these things actually work these models might be great for you now going a little bit further down we get into those really cool cyber helmets that we covered last week now before we move on to our next phase i told you guys that we were going to be doing a giveaway and now i'm going to show you what that giveaway is. That's right, it's this really awesome bicycle. And doesn't this thing look absolutely awesome? I mean, it's not incredibly hard, there's not a whole lot of pieces here, but the pieces that we do get are pretty cool. This is not your typical 3D metal model. Again, there's not a whole lot of pieces here, but once it is done, it really does look cool. So, how do you get your hands into this? How, how is this whole contest going to work? Well, it's actually quite easy. All you have to do is follow the Moyo store and Groove Builders on Instagram. And when we post our post, make a comment. This is your entry. That's it. Then on the 13th of November, we're putting everybody into a random number generator. And the one that comes out on top is our winner. Good luck to everybody. And I look forward to seeing everyone enter. Let's move on to our next piece, which is something that I think is not necessarily new, but something that might have flown under a lot of people's radar. And that is our friends over at Tenyo. Now Tenyo is a very interesting brand and one that we don't really hear a whole lot from when it comes to the 3D metal model world. I know them from doing magic as a kid, uh, but here we have some really neat Beauty and the Beast models, Chip and Dale and Cinderella's Castle. These are models that you can actually get from Disney outside of the parks, which if you don't know, Disney actually licensed Metal Earth to do the majority of their 3D metal models. But it seems like Tenyo here through some of their puzzles stuff actually is allowed to do some of their own things here as well these are not big they actually say petite here so that tells me that they're going to be on the smaller side but they are in full color and they're actually kind of neat little scenes from the movies let's take a quick little look at the beauty and the beast model real quick now of course this is all translated from japanese but taking a quick little look here uh, we can actually see that uh, if i can zoom in nope i can't zoom in this is the only uh, picture that i'm actually going to be able to see here but taking a quick little look at this we can see that yes it is in color the color does seem to be on the uh more of the photo side of things it almost looks like a bubble jet printer it looks interesting uh it's definitely not reflective it looks like it's going to be matte and uh, yeah, you know what guys, it's definitely small and we can just see by the size of the tabs there on the bottom, this is definitely gonna be a smaller model. But if you're a big fan of Disney and you want something for the Christmas tree, this might be for you. And so I just want to show that to you guys because this again might have flown under some of your radar. I do try to take a look at as many different websites as I can every single week. But if you guys ever find something cool, please do me a favor, make a comment down here with a link. I would gladly take a look at it and put it into next week's video. All right, now let's head over to the Metal Earth subreddit and take a look at the top five threads for this week. Looking at the first one here, we have Crimson89. 
completed my first build. Wow, like this is again a pretty hard one for your first one, especially when it comes to Deadpool. You did a great job on that chest, man. Like honestly, um, wow. Like uh, as, as, a, as a metal model builder myself and as a, one who's built plenty of models out there, I can tell you that Deadpool is definitely one of the more complex ones because of all that interesting round details that you have to do. And if you're not used to bending these kind of metal, to get those bends just right is difficult and you seem to have aced this. I would love to see how you've been able to do this so seamlessly. I wonder what other models you've done in the past. Uh, I know you said it's your first 3D metal model, but I can see in the background there, it looks like you have some uh, toolage uh, with a little bit of a light. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Mr. Inspector and I see that, you can't get past me. So I would say that uh, you probably did some other modeling and I would love to be able to see some of that stuff too because if you were able to make this on your first attempt, I can only say, man, you got some other stuff I would love to see. Uh, take a quick look at the comments here. This is one of my favorite builds. You're lucky this was your first, and uh, I would agree. This is from Pete. We also have a limp hot dog here. I thought the first photo was it complete, paying homage to all the times he's been dismantled. These are such cool models. I need to try one. Oh, buddy, you definitely need to try one. They're really cool. And uh, we also have Iron Man here saying neat. And we also have Hobo, astonishing for your first build. Super nice, and I completely agree. I can also not talk. I wonder why. <laughs> What's going on? Anyway, you, my friend, of course, having this really awesome build, get yourself the almighty upvote. Let's go on to our next thread here. It looks like we got ourselves the warrior in crimson and gold. This is posted by Captain XO Co. And uh, this was actually five days ago. Great job on this one here again. I mean, look at the build quality. You've done a great job on the arms. I can see all the uh, tab work is done pretty well there too. I can see that near the end where you had the uh, hands here, you decided to fold those tabs down. I haven't built this one myself, so I don't know how you would actually be able to hide that tab if you could at all. I know there's probably actually a wall there on the other side. It's probably preventing that from being completely done. But again, you did a really good job here overall. I mean, even in the head here, I mean, uh, it's kind of hard to do with the uh, zoom in there. But just looking at the helmet there, it's like a really good job on that whole rounding and actually connecting that front plate. I know that when I've built some of my other metal models in the past, especially some of the armor ones, connecting some of this lattice can be a real pain in the butt because there's so many different kinds of holes that are there and trying to get the tab just in the right spot. I mean, these actually seem to be pretty decent in terms of the holes, so it doesn't look like it's gonna be too hard, but definitely that chest plate I can see caused uh, could have caused a little bit of love, but you did a great job forming this overall. And uh, I've, I've actually seen this one done a lot in the past and it seems like a lot of people actually have a lot of the tabs just kind of flailing everywhere. So again, really good job on this. And uh, let's see what the other people are saying here. I break this so quick. Oh, great job, OP. Again, I, I completely agree. See, I told you, some of that last work can be pretty tricky and I completely agree. It's definitely not an easy model to do. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got uh, UDCC123, fun build or frustrating build, which brand? And uh, Captain responded, half fun, half frustrating, not gonna lie, it's Metal Earth. And of course, this is actually one of the older Metal Earth models as well, so that's pretty cool to know too. And uh, looking down here again, we have our friend Hobo, great shaping, beautiful build. All right, now my friend Captain XOCO, you get yourself the almighty upvote. Uh, we're gonna go back over here and see what we got up next here. We have the cheese loving Viking posting. Very windy outside, so I started my first build of the season. I give to you the Metal Earth Freight Train. And uh, wow, my friend, you've actually done the, the whole thing. I'm, I'm actually super impressed. This is a pretty big kit. This is actually comes in a little bit of a box set. This was actually released before they started doing all the color models that they're doing now. So I know that the metal here is actually gonna be a little bit thicker. And it seems like you handled it extremely well. All the cars here look fantastic. I love a little Lego figure there for a reference and size. I was actually curious myself to see how big these cars were going to be. So that Lego figure does give me a great reference. And uh, we can just see that every single one of these cars just done so well. Again, even this little caboose here looks really, really good. And uh, yeah, you know what? There was some severe wind outside of my way too. And I definitely want to do some building too, but uh, I don't know, something just keeps stopping me from doing these kinds of things. Um, anyway, going down here, uh, Mutation Factory, very cool. Looks like you took your time and did a good job. What a start to the building season. 
And yes, I, I actually completely agree. You know, I'm gonna start giving upvotes to the comments that I go through. I don't know why I haven't been doing that in the past. That just seems rude. We need to do upvotes on comments. And then we have Fit Adhesiveness here saying, I really enjoy this build. I put actual coal inside this car. And um, I also think I remember seeing this post a while back. Um, I can see that the actual Cheese Loving Viking also said the same thing just below that. And uh, yeah, this has actually been a model that's been posted a few times. And it always is a really cool one to see. And buddy, you did a great job. So you get yourself also that really awesome upvote. Let's go back here to our fourth post. What is this tool called? It's been by far my most used tool. Well, my friend, that is called a tab bending tool. Uh, one that uh, I also love using myself. It's a great tool, especially when you're trying to get all those little tabs down inside the little piece or even just trying to twist things in the proper way. I find that this guy is one of my favorite tools to use. There are many different manufacturers of this tool now. I was even trying to get one made myself, but it just seems so hard to be able to get people to follow through with some of these things these days and uh, so who knows maybe this year is the year that I'll be able to put out some of my own tools that I've been trying to get out for years and, and if I can do that my guys this is definitely one that I have there's actually about four different ones that I have of this kind just slightly different and I think that everyone would like them but I just really want to make sure that I get the proper build quality in there and I also don't work a lathe and I'll be honest with you, I would love to learn how to use a lathe. It's just that I got so much stuff going on, it's impossible for me to learn everything, uh, at least right now. Who knows, maybe in the future, we'll be doing a really awesome 3D metal model crate thing. And then like, who knows, maybe we'll make our own 3D metal models and maybe we'll do this whole thing full time. Who knows? But uh, for right now, we have to work with what we got. So this again, my friend, is the whole tab bending tool. Peace Cool makes a really cool version of it. Check it out on AliExpress or Amazon and if we go down here a little bit let's see what people say the tabber the tab twisty bender the Tabitha oh McDillon 12 you're after my own heart here man right away I I, I love you I'm gonna give you the old upvote just immediately I love you so much <laughs> oh great uh, let's see here I don't know but I love it as well and that's coming from the Phoenix cat here uh, butter astronaut, uh, mandrel maybe, split mandrel gets me gets close. Yeah, you know, again, I, it's a tab bending tool. It's what I've always been referred to it as. Maybe it has an official name, but I mean, if you want to get real specific, it's technically a mini break because it's just it's made for bending metal and it's made for bending it into almost 90 degrees. Um, at least in my definitions, this to me is a metal break. Anyway, uh, I like to call it a tab bending tool. Again, my friend, asking the awesome questions, you get the immediate upvote. Let's go back here. This comes to us by Lefty1984. My second build, this one was hard. Now, okay, I agree a little bit. This one can be hard if you built something relatively easy the first time around. Now I say that because this is actually one of my favorite builds. This is a, a, a hidden favorite of mine. And the reason for that is I had so much fun building it. And I don't know why. I, I, I know I'm not a huge Gundam guy. I actually don't know a whole lot about that stuff. That's why I don't comment a whole lot on it. Um, I would love to learn a little bit more, but I find it a little bit intimidating with the amount of lore that's out there. Um, but I, I had so much fun building this one. The, the crim honestly, the Crimson Knight was one of my favorite builds from, uh, I think I actually built this one from Peace Goal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is a Peace Goal model. And um, I, I just loved it. The, the parts were all numbered way back when I built it. Um, I remember the metal itself being really great to bend and shape. I, actually, there wasn't a whole lot of difficulty for me in this one. But again, at that time, I had built tons of metal models. So I definitely had a lot more experience than somebody that only had well, this being their second model. So yeah, so I, I'm not trying to compare myself in that way. I'm just trying to compare my experience. I loved this model. So um, maybe if you were to try to come back to this one, maybe you can find another one a little bit later on if you built a couple of more, maybe you can find the enjoyment that I found in it. Um, but I can also understand that people are different and you know, different building styles require different models. So just because I like something doesn't mean necessarily you're gonna like it too. Um, but you did a fantastic job here, Lefty, honestly. I, I, I Even though you said you had a hard time with it, just taking a look at this, you did a great job on the on the arms. You did a great job on all the miniature details. The domes look really good, especially around the center there, along the waist. 
Um, you did really good on the little spike details here at the bottom. You know, mine weren't the greatest there. You pull that off pretty well. And even the leg details seem to be pretty flush. Mine actually kind of came up over time. And that was because I actually didn't bend the tabs right on the edge. So you did a better job here than I did on mine. I, I won't be surprised if this is going to become the pride of your collection. Because honestly, man, like you did a great job. And uh, yeah, let's see what other people are saying here. We got Visible Phil 6699. It looks hella cool, and I completely agree. Let's go ahead and give him the old upvote. Hobo, very sharp and clean. Great job on the tabs. Fantastic job for your second build. Got a name slash number for this piece cool build. Uh, he's actually asking that, I think, for referencing on the uh, whole wiki that we have. And um, I should say that we have, this is something that he's, this is like a, a baby to Hobo here. And if you guys haven't checked out that wiki, it literally has almost every single instruction from every model that's out there, with the exception of some like really hard to find ones or new ones that we haven't got our hands on yet. But I will tell you, Hobo is an amazing dude. If you guys haven't uh, got a chance to interact with him on the forums, Definitely understand this guy is awesome. He He's a great guy. So just keep that out and let's go ahead and move on to the next one here crimson 89 that's dope and i completely agree now we go back up to the top here lefty 1984 you get yourself the upvote because again i think you did a fantastic job on this even though you said it was one of the harder ones you've had to build now i want to scroll down here just a little bit because i want to show something uh it's kind of something we've been talking a little bit about throughout this build today and that is that we see all different kinds of models being released from different kinds of of manufacturers out there and we never know what we're going to see in any given week this right here is an example of a new titanic that's been released this is actually a screenshot that was taken and if we take a look at this little titanic we can see it's actually completely done in color and while this color does look interesting we can also see that this is done completely differently than how metal earth has designed theirs now we can talk about quality differences, and right away, I actually am super sus on this one. I mean, take a look at this, guys. Like, look at the smokestacks. This seems completely thin. And while the coloring does look cool, I will tell you right now, I would be super suspicious about this coloring because it actually looks almost glossy. And I guarantee this is gonna be that kind of paint that just cracks and crumbles as you try to make these different shapings. And even taking a look at this ship, now I know these are kind of Photoshopped in general to make them look better and brighter, but I mean, Looking at this one right here, I mean, there seems to be a whole bunch of touch-up done to this. You can actually see some of the digitalization right here along the side. So that to me also kind of presents a little bit of an interesting uh, debate. Now, that being said, looking at how this whole hull is put together and how the back is actually put together, that would also tell me that this is gonna be super hard. I mean, even on this demo, look at the back here. Look at how crunched up that is. That tells me that this is gonna be a very complex model to build. So if you had to choose between this model and the Metal Earth version, guys, I, personally, I'm gonna tell you to go to the Metal Earth version. And the reason for that is it looks way better and uh, also the quality is going to be better than this one here. Even though this one does have some kind of cool textures to it and the coloring does look neat to it, I just don't think that the quality is gonna be here. I could be wrong and who knows, maybe I'll go ahead and just order one of these guys up and I'll show you exactly what it means in a future episode. But with that guys, that brings us to the end of our What's Grooving episode and I hope you guys had a good time here. If you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button and for more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content, including bills that have been shown right here on the show coming up in the future. Coming up in the future. Don't, don't worry, more things to come. It's, it's all good. All good. It's all good.